Let's go. Hey everybody, this is uh, the Stenonema Ranges of Ontario. We're a father and son volunteer group. Uh, today I'm going to do a very unique video because we have the technology and the opportunity to do such a thing without getting into writing a stack of paper for you to read. Uh, this video is based on the fact that I have found a new form of the Stenochron genus and it's potentially a new species. Um, it's been called Comididum. Um, and it resembles nothing and it resembles everything in the genus as I said to Jeff Webb. Um, we're, today we're going to look at the specific ecology because although the ecology of these guys seems to be a little bit more specific than other Stenochron, if you're interested in collecting Stenochron, this little ecology video will give you a good aspect and look at what you're going to look for to find Stenochron in any volume. Using a kick, knot, a kick net, uh, same, and flipping rocks is pretty much useless for, for going after Stenochron. Part of that is because they like very slower moving waters, and by the time you kick them over, they often go back to the underside of the rock again before they go in the net. You will collect them in a net, but the percentages are very low. This is the best way to collect them, and this is the best place to find Stenochron, in particular comedinums. What we're looking at here is this little bank here, you will see this strip of water. You will see right here that we're wa the water speed is approximately 10 miles per hour. Over at the shallow bank where the grass is, it's less than two miles per hour. There's a tiny little zone, and this is the very first spot where I ever collected commodities, and they are right inside that little pocket. This strip is about seven feet long and about two feet wide. If you are in this spot here, there is nothing. If you're too far over, there is nothing. They are only in this strip of water. Up above here, above this where this tree is crossing, I have collected other ones, and I've actually recreated as close as possible their specific requirmental needs as far as the water speed and sedimentation levels goes. Right upstream here from where above the tree, you'll see the fast water coming in in the pocket. Up above this, this stretch is full of Epiorius. There are approximately eight forms of Epiorius living in that environment, and Epiorius are notorious for living in high oxygen only and very, very clean water. So because we're in 60, a 60-yard 60 range and we're at a high dissolved oxygen level, that says a lot about these Stenochron and their requirements. Now we're going to go over and take a closer look at their requirements and their specific needs and how to get them. I'm going to try to get into this spot without disturbing the sediment. We'll put the camera on this side and I'll come in on this side so we can look, review the rocks a bit. This form, the Stenochron uh, Comedidums, tend to like really big rocks and that sucks because it makes it very hard to get them out of the water because what you're actually going to do is you're going to grab the rock you're going to lift it straight up slowly and carefully so that they don't lose their grip on the rock and then you have to flip the rock over the average rock first of all is black in color on the bottom and the average rock is often this size this is a, is a perfect rock to find, and I have actually found comedidums on this specific rock. You will notice its size. It's heavy. They like big rocks. This side is actually no good because of the weed growth. They're almost never found in weed growth or sediment. They prefer rocks that are clean often kind of shiny looking and all, almost always black in color. We're going to look at three rocks up here in a minute that are rocks that you'll find them on, rocks you will not find them on, so you can see the difference. But this is a classic size comedidum rock and you can see that there's a slimy clay buildup on the underside. On this side of the rock you will find absolutely no stenochron. This is a perfect habitat. My guess is it's probably six miles per hour in the water speed. The water temperature, oh, by the way, it's September 1st, 2014. 
The water temperature is 22 degrees. The water depth here to the sedimentation is probably six to eight inches deep. This is exactly what they like. This is a rock that I would expect to find at least one or two on. And I can see there's one, two, there's two there for sure. Although Heptagenia flavicens and Poa are in the environment as well, and they seem to be the, what I would call the seam dividers. They do live in this environment with the stenocrons, but more so, the Heptagenia, I collect more of them right about here, where we're hitting the 10 to 12 mile an hour, maybe even 20 mile an hour range is specific to the Heptagenias. Over here, if we take a close look at these rocks, come on up over here, Ben. We collected a couple of common items we have in the tank right now, but they're very small. You're going to see something here. You're going to see this is the basic limestone white rock. This is the blackish rock. I have no idea what it is. I'm not a geologist, and I'm not interested in becoming a geologist. This is some kind of black rock, and this is the same black rock, but with the, the, that slimy clay sediment that's on the bottom there. They don't like this. If there is any of this on the rock, they will not be on the rock. This is your white limestone rock. They will not be on this rock. Why? Because it's white and they're black. They're very sensitive to their environmental needs. They obviously recognize they're very dark because they are pretty much black. Until you get, until you get to 100x, 200x on a microscope is only when you realize that they're actually extremely dark brown, highlighted with a lot of black. This rock right here is perfect for finding comedidums on, and other stenochrome would be on a rock like this. This rock is approximately six inches, well, five inches by 10 inches long. Preferably, the rock should be basically, this rock right here, put some water on it so you can see just how black it is, and you can only imagine picking something black off of that, what it would look like, but that's, that is a perfect stenochron rock right there. And when you're dealing with stenochron and collecting them, what you're going to want to do is I'll use this rock as a sample. This rock is in the water, and this is exactly what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to pick this rock up slowly and gently, remove it from the vacuum of the surface tension of the water, flip it over, and place it on something to sort very quickly. I have adopted using artist brushes for many procedures whether it's dissection, whether it's collection, whether it's helping manipulate and move them around for pictures. These are very soft fiber brushes and they do absolutely no damage to the larva. What I do is I come up and I find a larva on here. There isn't a larva on here, but I'm just showing you the sample. What I'll do is I'll take, it's called a flat blender's artist brush. I'll place it beside the nymph and then I'll use the other one to encourage him onto the brush. Once he's on the brush, then I could take him and put him in the tank. Let me actually, uh, let's do this in real time, real life. I have a comedidum right here that I'm taking out of the tank that we just caught. I need both brushes to encourage him onto the brush. Okay, now. There's a comedidum sitting right there inside the rock. That one's not as dark. He probably molted within the last seven, six, seven hours here in the real world. But you can see how difficult that is to see on a dark rock. Now, to get him off that rock with this technique without any damage at all, I can place the brush in front of him or beside him and try to encourage him onto the brush. And then he's on the brush undamaged. No gill damage, no leg damage, no tail damage, nothing. And then I can just simply take the brush, stick it in the thing, rinse it off, and I'm done. So that gives you a basic outline if you're interested in collecting stenochron. This gives you a basic uh, foundation and understanding of where to look and what to look for. Stenochron are also very sporadic hatchers. So if you're thinking about collecting the adults, good luck. 
They're, uh, they hatch in very small numbers and that's probably why they're known for interbreeding or there's, we pretty much assume they're known for interbreeding. That's not really a proven thing. That's just something that makes sense because in order for the genus to survive, it would have to mate with whichever is available. Um, because there's such small populations, you could have two forms living in the same population easy that you couldn't recognize the difference in between. But genetically, there would be a difference in them. One may be a specific valid species, may, one may just be a form. But rather than them both expiring and dying, I suspect, and I believe it's very sensible as a survival technique, that they probably would interbreed. And that's where a lot of confusion comes in with them. But they still have distinct forms that are interbred forms or that, that what you could call something that's a variant within the inner space between one form and another. There are distinct forms. Um, and I suspect that it's sensible that they come from that. So anyway, we're here to collect. I need to get some more males. I've reared four females so far, which are distinct, which you can see on my Facebook page. They're marked as paratypes, comedinums. They're all females. I'm awaiting a male. I have at least two male larvae in the tank that are probably around the 22nd instar and should hatch pretty soon. But the more males I can get, the more substantiation I can get towards the possibility of a valid species. But for now, comedinum is just a form. It's a new form. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.